people will look for things on social media that validates and enables the bullshit that they're in so that they feel like it's okay. Right. Memes are certain things that talk about like it's okay to be in your feelings and all that shit. No, dude, it's not because if those feelings do not have a direct connection with the thing that's actually taking place right now and you're just feeling because you're in your feelings, but there's nothing tangible, well, there's no relevancy to the fact. But this meme is saying that it's okay. And then you're going to go repost it and then you're going to yeah. fucking talk about it. And then you're going to say your friends like, that are losers. Yeah. Like, no, man. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Elevation with Chris Orm, where we talk to individuals who have climbed the ladder of success. Today, we have a very special guest, and that's Sean Alexander. And Sean is a worldwide coach, fitness influencer, personal development expert, and just an overall dope guy. And I met him over here at Sticky Paw Studios. So I welcome Sean to the show, and we got a lot to talk about today. So, Sean, I welcome you to the show. I appreciate that. It's an honor. Cool, man. Thanks for being here. So, um, Sean, let's just go ahead and dive straight into the meat and potatoes. So, you've been sober 20 years now. Yeah. But you didn't start that way, clearly. No. It was kind of fucked up, or what was going on? Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. You know, my father was extremely, like, physically abusive. He was like a monster. And uh, my mom was emotionally abusive. My sister was kind of half emotionally abusive and physically abusive, obviously nowhere near to the extent of my father. Um, you know, and then I had, uh, and then, you know, she was a sister above me by 10 years and I had two older siblings. My brother was the first, so he's the oldest. He passed away. Um, and then there's the next one. And so, and the two oldest were born with um, chronic illnesses, not hereditary, just by shit luck. And, you know, I basically had to watch them lose control of their life as I was a kid, not really understanding why or what the fuck's going on. And so like that had a certain toll of of just anxiety and depression. And again, I'm just a kid, I don't understand why, why, why they're born with sicknesses when it's not even hereditary. And then add the abuse all into it, mm -hmm. you know. Life just sucked, man. Like, I was I was depressed. I was depressed for, like, 15 years. But through that process of depression, like, I found my way to drugs. I found my way to, like, really cool people at the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, started fucking drugs at the age of 11 years old. Um, almost 11. And I did that for a 10-year streak. And it got, eventually I got to a point where I hated my life. I got in trouble with the law. And, you know, I tried to take my life about five times. Failed, fortunately. And eventually I had gotten to that point where I was like, man, fuck everyone. Like, fuck my family. Fuck my friends. Fuck the world. And I can't even kill myself when I'm trying to. So let me try the opposite. And I'm just not going to trust anybody. I'm going to do it by myself. I don't trust the system. I don't trust therapy. Yeah. Let me just see if I can figure this thing out on my own. And God's already spoken to me the very last attempt that I made. So... Let me just reverse engineer this whole process of how I got to becoming a piece of shit in society. I love it. And, uh, you know, the rest was history. Like, I just knew I needed to get mentally and physically good. That's all that mattered. And then through that process, as, like, my mental clarity had become so clear, mm -hmm. like, the, so defined, um, I started to just become more ambitious, more driven, I uh, dropped out of going to law school and, you know, I just, I, I actually started to see my life literally elevate Yeah, and money started increasing. The quality of circles started to improve. Uh, you know, I started to, I wasn't afraid to invest in myself, even though I didn't have the money to, yep. I didn't care about going into debt because I just wanted to learn. Yeah. Like I just wanted to become a student of life. Like I need to be around fucking winners and killers that are fucking doing life on a level that I can't even comprehend yet. Um, while I get mentally and physically better and control this fucking addiction that I have because relapse was not an option. I 100% took an oath and made a deal with the devil that I'll fucking eat a bullet if I relapse. So there's no way. And I, and I wasn't afraid to die. Death was not a fear factor anymore at that point. So I knew that me take, making that promise to myself, Sean, if you relapse, you're fucking eating the bullet. Like I wasn't afraid to do it. Yeah. Um, so that hung over my head and everything just started to change. 
got around really successful people. My income started to grow. Um, and my income started to grow because my habits and my internal dialogue, my self-talk through reverse engineering, all these shitty habits that I got into is the reason why my income started to change also. Like I went from being like super broke to not being broke and then to making six figures and then beyond that and the six figures in a month. And the life just changed because all I was focused on was my habits and the people that I was around. And I, was, and I sacrificed everyone mm -hmm. around me that didn't add any form of value to my life. That includes my family. Like I isolated myself away from my parents. Yeah. So you had a point in your life and a certain day where you said never again. Yeah. I'm never doing this again. Yeah. So you, you left your old life behind and you started this new life. Was that scary? No. Because you scared. Let me tell I'm actually glad you, you yeah. said that because let me tell you, staying in that same spot was way more yeah. scarier than fucking making changes. Um, I made a post the other day where I was so scared of staying the same that I, pr I preferred to change. Some people are so scared of change that they'd rather stay the same. And that doesn't make any fucking sense to me. There's no, like, staying the same was not a fucking, I would rather, again, I would rather fucking be dead yeah. than stay the same. It just, no. I was more, I was actually, and to be honest, I was excited for change. I was excited to become a better person. I was excited to become some kind of value in this society. I didn't know what yet. Yeah. I just knew I just had to be a decent human being and not be a menace to society, not be some fucking sl scum junkie. And, you know... I was I was fearless at that point because I, I I I craved change more than anything, and I didn't give a fuck who I left behind with that yeah. with that old world. Like I really didn't. So was it faith, belief in yourself, the just fear of staying the same and living that life? And you know, you probably would have ended up dead or in jail. In prison, or, right. Yeah. So you go on this whole new life journey and it's it's only been up from there. I'm sure there's been ups and downs along the way. There's gonna be ups and downs forever. Just different types of ups and downs, no matter where you are in life. Even some of the most successful people that we know that are worth like nine, 10 figures, they still have their downs. It's, it's part of the process of life. Can't expect everything to always be an uphill. Like you're gonna have momentum, mm -hmm. but the, down, the shitty sides are gonna come with it too. So, would you say that your first step towards success was dropping the drugs and alcohol? No. The first was the decision I made. Okay. That was the first step was like, was really having a desire for change. Because let me tell you something. A lot of people talk about wanting change. A lot of people talk about wanting more or being more, but it's just an idea. They're just interested in the thought. Yeah. Oh, I want change. Oh, I want to look better. Oh, I want some more money in the bank. I want to feel better about myself. I want to start being in shape, whether you're a male or female. But when it's time to pull the trigger, invest in yourself and start eating better and start actually making better decisions, better habits, changing the fucking people you hang out with. People don't think that who you hang out with is, does have a correlation with your health and fitness also. It does. Again, it's just a fucking idea that they're interested in. And if you don't make that definitive decision, I desire change and I'm going to crave it and I'm going to become obsessed with change for the rest of my life. Nothing else matters. You won't, like you're not then you're not going to make any changes. You're going to you're someone that's literally and and if it's not and if it's not to the degree that I'm talking about and you do it temporarily, you will go back to where you came from. You will go back to the people you came from. You might not go back to drugs and alcohol, but you will go back to the people you 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 were with and you will go back to that mediocre average fucking life on the average person you were cuz it's just temporary. You're looking for a ticket versus a definitive change. That means there's no fucking going back. There's no going back to the old habits. There's no going back to the previous people I was with. Nothing from the past can come back to life. So Ever. You, so you left your old life behind. Talk, talk me through. So you're living at what spot at that time at 21 years old? I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm in California. I'm in SoCal. So the day you decide to make the change and start a new life, do you have to 
move out from that spot and never see those friends again. Like, talk me through the exact kind of process you went through. I cut the friends out right away. I just stopped being in contact with them. They were out. Um, you know, my parents still loved me. And I was, I stayed, I mean, I, let's see, at 21, what was I? Yeah, at 21, like, I was staying, I was kind of like just going back and forth between my mom and my dad's as I'm making these changes, getting financially healthier, um, and while I'm getting mentally and physically healthier at the same time. And then after about a couple of years where I was in a good spot, uh, then I, you know, left the house again, went on my own. And I kept in touch with my parents, but from an arm's length. Yeah. Um, but all the old friends, out. Never again. There was only, I tell you that, there's only one friend to this day from that time, from my teens, that is still a part of my life. I mean, we don't, we're like best friends, but from a distance, not because that's how we have it. It's just because he still lives in California. I live here. We're yeah. both in two complete different worlds and um, different tracks in life. Yeah. But, you know, he and he's fucking winning big time, um, you know, and so we're winning to our own right. And um, but we're still if we were to get on a phone call, it would be like there's never been any time apart. Mm. So he's the only person. And, and the reason why is because when I made that decision to change, like, one, he saw me changing, and I hit him up, and I'm like, bro, we got to make changes. Like, yeah. it's time to fucking adjust. And he adjusted with me. So you guys brought each other up together. Yeah, it was just constant accountability. Nice. And so you mentioned that you had to do this on your own. This was a decision that you made. You couldn't talk to a therapist or other people. I can imagine at times that only having yourself you know, maybe your self-talk gets down one night. Like, how do you, how did you do it yourself? To be honest, not. I know a lot of people might think it's bullshit. There wasn't a time where I had a downside. Again, I was craving change so much. And here's the thing, too. Like, I wasn't looking for validations from other people. I wasn't looking to be told I'm doing a great job. Like, I, I was a piece of shit. Like, just because I'm sober for a few months, I'm still a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, you know, so for me... The only thing that validated who I was becoming during that phase is just the steps of doing the things that were correct to get me to a different place in life. Working out every day, reading every day, studying every day, having better financial literacy every day, you know, investing in a mentor and being around more successful. Every day, these little things were the vet, were the actual tangible validations yeah. that were like, all right, I kicked ass today. All right, I kicked ass today. Like, I didn't fall short one time. There was, Even though it was difficult, I had my withdrawals, money was fucking tight, bills yeah. were hard to pay. None of that fucking held me down. Because I'm like, man, I, it was already 10 times worse six months prior. Yeah. This is nothing. I can handle this. And... I just kept doing these little things every single day. And as, you know, another mutual friend that we know, like we both talk about stacking fucking W's every day. Yes, like all these little W's you stack every day are the val are the only validations you need to know that you're doing a good job to correct your life and to move into a better place in life. And as long as you're doing that, you're never going to have self-defeating thoughts ever. So you talk about stacking W's every single day. Yeah. So what timeline are you looking at? Are you looking at just the 24 hours ahead of you? Are you looking at just the now? Like, how did you move that journey forward? It's 24 hours. Day 24 by day? 7 Yeah. Yeah, like, because yesterday's W means nothing today. The rents do every day. Every day. All right, so talk to us about some of the habits that maybe you have now that really you you have non-negotiable habits every day. What What do those include? So work out seven days a week. I do cardio seven days a week. Um, making sure I stick to uh, my nutrition plan and my eating habits every single day. Um, church is every single week, non-negotiable, unless I'm out of town. Date nights twice a week, no matter what. Uh, sometimes the day might change in case if I have like an emergency meeting I got to do, mm -hmm. but it still happens twice a week. Uh, my chicken and I work out together four days a week. I work out three days a week by myself. Um, and that's more for like just my own mental stability, yeah. really. Um, 
you know, reading a little bit every day, studying a little bit every day, certain amount of phone calls and outreach I do every single day. So there's all these little things that I have to do every single day. Um, and if anything gets missed because certain things might take up more time, I'll make up for it the next day mm-hmm. so that I can claim the, the full W from the previous day. Nice. So you talk about going on date nights twice a week, and I think it's super important to keep the romantic relationships with your partner. Um, I want to talk to you about, you know, the process of going out to a restaurant, because I know a lot of people when they're sticking to their diet, you know, it can be hard. Um, for instance, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Like, so for me, you know, her and I, we're both in a place where physically, like we're in really good shape and we can afford to fuck off and eat kind of what we want. But for the most part, Look, man, like when we go out to dinner, like we generally, if we're going out to dinner, I get a really good steak, I get vegetables, and then if I'm in the mood for it, my carbohydrates will be like mashed potatoes or some bullshit, or I'll save it and I'll just have dessert. Yeah. But I I don't miss the the mandatory proteins I got to get. Let's grab a steak, a chicken, or or fish, get some vegetables, and then the carbohydrate will be you know, whatever I'm in the mood for at that point. And it's not always going out either. Like our date nights are sometimes just at home. Like just yeah. fucking cooks food, we'll eat. Um, it's the one time where we might watch some TV because it's just some quiet time. I don't touch my phones when we're having date night. Um, unless I got to look up something or whatnot. And, um, you know, and then sometimes date night, I was just talking about in the previous show, like sometimes date night, it's about to be a fucked up conversation. Yeah. And that's date night. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I want to elaborate more on that. So you will have a serious conversation and it might even be a bad conversation during date night. Sure. Talk us through that. That is date night. Because, you know, <sighs> look, I'm not some fucking marriage therapist bullshit or any of that shit stuff, but I've been a, a human behavior specialist for a very long time. And at the end of the day, when it comes to like, relationships working, it's all about human behavior. That's really what it comes down to. And sometimes when your relationship is facing facing any kind of challenges, it's time to have an attentive conversation with intention about why there's certain holes and gaps in the relationship. And it might be fucked up. It might be difficult. It might get shitty. It, there might be some yelling, screaming, cussing. Like, And for people that say, like, oh, that's toxic. No, fuck off. You're not in a real relationship if you don't have that. Every relationship has that all the fucking time. But the intention is like, hey, there's a problem. We're going to spend the next three hours talking about it. We're going to eat, and we're going to spend the next three hours talking about it. It might get hot. It might not. It just depends on the level of disagreements that exist. But we're going to discuss this because we're going to make sure this doesn't exist going into tomorrow. Got it. So as someone who focuses on human behavior, I my response mechanism when I get frustrated is to shut down. I go inside my turtle shell. Like, for someone like me, if you were coaching an individual like myself, how do you recommend to deal with those conflicts on date night? Because I don't want to screw up the date night. I don't want to maybe step on toes and, and ruin the mood. Then your, the priority is not correct. And the intention behind your relationship is also not correct. And I don't mean that in any offense no, at all. No, absolutely not. The thing is, like, when you shut down, you're not, you're not shutting down. You're fucking off your relationship is yeah. what you're actually doing. Because... There has to be an agreement between you and your spouse where you say like, hey, listen, there's going to be times where we might have to have a conversation. It's going to get shitty. And we have to agree that we're never going to shut down. We're never going to turn our back and we're never going to walk away. We're going to have those hard conversations no matter how shitty it gets until we come to a resolve by the end of the night. That's it. And if that becomes a standard principle, then you'll never have to shut down. You'll be able, you'll know. And here's the thing too. Also had the conversation where it's like, hey, if it does get way too hot, yeah, let's take a break. I'm gonna go in the other room, cool off, whatever, and let's let's rendezvous in 30 minutes. That's a very interesting take, and I mean, I think a lot of having these conversations on podcasts is learning from different individuals because these are things that I suffer from in my life, and it sounds like you have you're you know a couple steps ahead of me in that regard. So it's really interesting to hear your perspective on that. And I think there's a lot of learning lessons for myself, the audience, um, about how to run a good relationship. We're, we're in a, listen, we're in a world where men are afraid to construct and criticize their partner or their relationship. Oh, she's going to leave me. Like, dude, don't be a pussy. Because at the end of the day, you're the man. You're supposed to lead. She's leaning on you. 
even if that means you got to be the asshole for the moment. That's okay. What's not okay is that you guys both run from the conversation, that you guys yeah. both run from the problem. Because guess what? There won't be a relationship to exist. You know? And sometimes that conflict might take a couple of days. It just might be like the disagreements are so heavy, mm -hmm. you know? But then you also have to ask like, are we on the same page with life? Are yeah. we singing the same song? Are we going in the right direction? Do we want the same end goal? Do we have the same standards and expectations, not just from each other, but the, from the people that we're gonna expect in our lives? Yeah. Who do we have in our lives? Do I want this kind of human being around? Do I wanna be friends with this kind of human being? No. You know, so the, again, you bring all this stuff together. If you guys are singing the same song, cool. Then until it gets resolved, yeah. you have those hard conversations. How quickly are you addressing something when you have a problem? Instantaneously. Instantaneously. I'm not even letting you finish your sentence. Nice. Instantaneously. Like, there's nothing more, again, and this is probably because of my past life, which has gifted me so well. I'm so blessed and grateful to have just been a piece of shit to society and having the the trials and tribulations that I went through because the learning lessons that I took from that has enabled me to, to construct myself in life differently than the average person would. Um, you know, and, and again, like when there's issues, you, you can't, you can't let those things linger, whether it's a, as a business relation, yeah. whether it's a personal relationship, whether it's, it's a friendship instantaneously, or at least say like, Hey, we got to have a talk about some shit. Um, either tonight or tomorrow. How do you frame it? Like, how do you how do you not come off as an asshole? Like, you, because there. I'm not. You, that's the, so that's the, I'm not worried about that. That's irrelevant. Really? Yeah. Like, if if there's something that like I got to address with my girl, I'll be like, babe, we gotta have a conversation tonight. And she's like, what's the problem? I'm like, tonight, not today. I'm busy. You're busy. We'll talk about it tonight. Okay. That's it. Got it. And then once food's made, we got food at the table. So what do you want to talk about? It's like I'm about to get my head cut off. Maybe. I don't know. Depends on how you receive and how you feed back. And if you agree or disagree. And if your disagreement is invalid with some like bullshit thought, you might, you know. But it's just, hey, we gotta have a conversation. Okay. So on that front, you talk about, you know, kind of walking to the same rhythm of life. I wanna know about do you have a do you have a written set of core values? Do you have a certain set of core values? Do you have an overall kind of Belief system to life? Yeah, I do. <sighs> like, my life constructs around integrity, loyalty, and honor, and nothing else. Like, everything revolves around that. How I make money, how I make friendships, how I relate to other people, you know, how I want to do business. Those, these, those, those are the, th I mean, that's just tattooed all over my body right yeah. now. Um, you know, that's, that's at the top and, and God leading from the front. Gotcha. Um, so I'm, I'm a God driven, God fearing man. And outside of God, I don't fear fucking anything. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid of risk. I'm not afraid of investing. I'm not afraid of losing money. I'm not afraid of anything. Just the man upstairs because the man upstairs intervened, intervened five times when I tried to take my life. Nice. So that I can rightfully be af afraid of. So you're blessed. Yeah. So I said, I believe like I'm very blessed and grateful to have gone through what I went through. And then as a matter of fact, if we go backwards at the age of 25, God intervened one more time. I'm not going to say too much detail on camera, but I was about to do some sinister shit that was going to land me in prison for life. Yeah. Yeah. And he stepped in, like woke my ass up. Yeah. So... A lot of times people say, you know, I have no regrets. I have no regrets. But you and I believe that regret is a powerful tool because yeah. sometimes we do things we regret, but you have a couple different options. You can either say, you know, I didn't learn anything from this, or you can really reflect on your regrets because correct me if I'm wrong, but your feeling of regret is a sign from the universe. So maybe you should take that as a learning lesson and move forward and never make that mistake again. Regret is your passage to the future. Regret is your guideline to the future. Like it's exactly what that is because the things from the past that you regret 
is exactly what you remind yourself like of what not to do or what to do better or what to do correctly. So <laughs> I think people are just like so full of shit and can't be transparent and honest with themselves. So they have to like regurgitate and make up their own nonsense to tell the world to make themselves yeah. look awesome. And it's like, man, just tell the world your reality. And if people don't like it, that's okay. I'm not looking to be validated. Yeah. I'm looking to change a life. I'm looking to be the light at the end of the tunnel or the hope that that fucking dude is sitting at where I was 20 years ago. And he needs that, like, dude, like, there's a way out. I can really crawl out of this fucking hole. Like, I can have the shit that you have being where I'm at. Um, yeah, because I was there, dude. I was actually 10 times worse than you are. Yeah. So I think that that makes you a great career coach because you've been on the the negative side. You've seen what it's like to be at the complete opposite. Yeah. Right now you're a stud. You've elevated in life. You know, if people saw you today, I don't know if they would know where you came from in the they past. They don't believe it. I just got asked. It is that. hard to believe. I just yeah. got asked that in the last. And the, I just got asked that. Like when I tell people, because like you know, when you come from like a past, like some of us. One thing is like your appearance, your physicality does matter. How you dress does matter, does. especially when you're not like a, a super smart brainiac. Um, I just know really hard work and I know how to level up my skills by investing myself to improve my, my craft. Um, and that's where my skills and my smarts kind of come from. And so part of that also means like I have to look different and I have to look better uh, because then when I tell somebody my history, they're like, no fucking way. Yeah. I don't fucking believe it. And I'm yeah. like, I swear to God, like that's exactly to the T. Um, you know, and that that does matter. Because, you know, plus I'm 6'2", I'm 260, I'm fully tatted up. I look like I just walked out of prison five days ago, right? Yeah. Or I look like some thug. And so professionalism, appearance, success, dressing right, all these things matter. Uh, you know, to the person that doesn't understand that. Right. So you started coaching in personal training. Is that correct? Yeah. And then eventually that evolved out of the gym and online. Correct. When was that transition? That went full online four years ago. Yeah, three or four years ago. Okay, so... Did you take some of the people that you were personal training in person and bring them online, or you started from ground zero? I took two people online. Okay. And I took and those two people I took online, they, uh, you know what? I take that back. That's not really the case. There were clients that I was coaching in their business. Gotcha. Um, so you were business coaching. Yeah. Online. So, yeah, because like so, what I have done over over the years has graduated. I went from like you know personal training. And, and now I hate that term. So like I went from like fitness coaching to recovery, co recovery and mental health coaching, and then went to business coaching after that. So okay. that's been like the graduation. Now I cover all three, depending on what somebody wants help with. And, you know, again, really like for me, the mantra is changing the quality of your life and, and, and changing your addictions to healthy obsessions whatever those addictions may be even if those addictions are just really bad fucking habits it doesn't have to be drugs and alcohol you just have like really bad habits let's change this let's we can take these habits and just turn them into healthy obsessions become obsessed with work obsessed with wanting to make money right. obsessed with looking and feeling better obsessed with having good people around you obsessed with becoming a fucking god-driven you know god-fearing man like these are the things that actually matter because these are the things that change the quality of your life and you know, it, the phrase has become so cliche when people talk about, oh, I just want to change people's lives. Like, I don't really think most people really know what that means yeah. until you've actually changed your life from ground zero, like literally ground zero. Right. Um, I don't, I hear so many times people talking about being at rock bottom and I'm like, motherfucker, yeah. you don't know what rock bottom right. is. Like, shut up. Like, fuck off. Yeah. Your rock bottom has so many options like I could cure that in five days. Some people would kill for your rock bottom. Yeah, man. Like my rock bottom was literally death or prison for life. Yeah. I had no, I, I can only go up. Like I need, that's why I said I, I became, I desired change so much because those were really the only two options. Yeah. Um, 
And so when I hear people talking about rock bottom and I'm like, and, and the rock bottom isn't legit rock bottom. And, you know, you're, you're going to have people that are going to say like, oh, this guy can't talk about whose rock bottom is more rock. Yeah. Like, no, because some things are real. And like when you have multiple different options and you're just tr- claiming it because you got a divorce, you broke up, you're, fu- you're broke, you got no money. In the, like you're just having some hardships. That's not rock bottom. It might feel like it, but that's not because there's many options you still have. And those people are not actually ready for change at all. When are you ready for change? The idea of change for them is almost like suicide. Like they don't want, they're not, they don't want to. They just hear these phrases and they throw it out. Okay. Let's say I'm broke. I'm overweight. I'm using drugs and alcohol. How do I change that? Like, let's say I, I have an idea of change. I don't, I'm not committed to change yet. What's the first step someone takes? Make a decision that you want to quit your vices. That's drugs, alcohol, the bad foods, because if you're overweight, you obviously have a bad addiction to, to how you eat in your relationship with food and your relationship with yourself. Make a decision that you actually want to change these. Like That's just where it starts, is, the, is that decision. And then if you, if, you tr- if you truly mean you want to change these things, okay, now we can go to the next step. And that next step is, all right, let's just start with exercising first. I don't even give a shit about the food yet. Yeah. Let's just start with the exercise part. And then we're going to start changing your food. Then we're going to change how you wake up and how you go to sleep. Yeah. Then we're going to change who you actually hang out with. Then we're going to change your expectations from yourself and your personal standard and if you actually thrive for personal excellence. Then once this is in routine, all right, now we're going to talk about the next step. So, you know, that's really where it starts. And if people understood that these things had a direct correlation with your financial success, and I know sometimes that's beating a dead horse because a lot of people don't like talking about financial success, and I think it's just their shitty relationship with money. Yeah. But there is a direct correlation because your habits, your behaviors, your thought process, you know, what you expect from yourself, what you expect from the people around you, um, the principles and standards that you just want in life, and where you want to go in life, you know, and then the habits of just eating better, feeling better, raising your own personal value is going to have a direct correlation with your financial health. How do you know where you want to go in life if you haven't been exposed to it? Get around people that are doing it. That's it. That's literally it. Even if that means you got to hire a mentor and and people are just way too afraid to do that also. Like, man, I don't even understand that. I'm I every single level up in my life I've made has been from hiring a mentor that I couldn't afford at the time. And we just keep going to the next level and the next level and the next level. And I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm continuing to elevate because I surround myself and I want to get better day after day. The point of investing in yourself for a mentor or coach for elevation in any area of your life that investment is supposed to make your current circumstance very undesirable and very uncomfortable because otherwise that investment means nothing. That means you don't got enough stake in it. That means you're not going to do the things that your fucking coach tells you to do because it didn't make it uncomfortable for you. It's got a sting. It has to fucking sting. It's got to fucking put a hole in your pocket. That's the point. Right. And I think a lot of people are afraid to do that. And I think, what is it? Is is just like, I'm going to do this and there's no other option? Like, is that really the only option in life for elevation? Ask that again. I mean, I, I'll just make it as a statement. I sure. think you when, once you say okay, this yeah. is the only option, yes. then you have no choice but to commit. Correct. But you, like I said, like you have to become obsessed with success. Whatever success is going to mean to you, I don't really care. Yeah. But you have to become obsessed with the actual word in all capitals. Like success has to become an absolute obsession obsession, yeah. Yeah. where you're now at a point of like, no compromises. Fuck anyone that wants to get in the way. I don't give a fuck if it's my my best friends who suck, if it's my relationship, as lo- if there are people that are not gonna add value or that are taken away from me and not giving back, you're out. No compromises. There's no conversation, you're out. That's it. It's that simple. And as shitty as that sounds, and they might think you're a fucking asshole, you're changing. Yeah, that's the point, bro. Like, I want to change. Yeah. I don't want to be here anymore. That's the point. I don't want to come back to this spot. Yeah. I don't want to be fucking broke anymore. 
you know, and that, and, and part of that change means like getting away from people that tell you you're awesome, getting away from people that fucking validate your nonsense and your shortcomings, like telling you that you're enough, you're good enough. I was just it's talking okay, about you this. missed like, no, dude, like you're not enough. You're not good enough. Like you're telling me you want to make more money. You're telling me you're not physically where you want to be. And you got some shit bag telling you. You're good enough. How is that good enough? Yeah. How is that an okay standard for you to have within yourself? But how is that okay to have a friend that holds you at a low standard? Yeah. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. Or people that are just validating your bullshit because like, hey, it's okay. Like, nah, that's not, man. Like my life fucking sucks. So I want to ask you a question that... I'm dealing with. I want to continue to elevate on my financial game. Okay. Okay. So right now I work a nine to five job. I work in high end luxury smart home automation. Okay. Okay. So I'm a manager level. I have a master's degree. I want to continue to make more money. Like I just had a conversation with one of my friends, Matt Bernath, shout out Matt Bernath. But I told him I wanted to make a lot of money in life. I want to drive a nice car. I, we live in Las Vegas. I want to live in a Blue Heron house. They're a premier builder. How do I elevate in my financial world? Because I'm, I'm working on my personal brand. I'm posting online, not missing, making content, things like that. But I don't know, is it my, is it my sales? Is it my outreach? Is it my fear? Like, is it that I don't have the correct product offering? Like, I don't know what's holding me back in the financial sense. And... I haven't unlocked that breakthrough. What's what's your schedule on your job? Nine to five? Seven to four. Seven to four. Yeah. What are you trying to do with your personal brand outside of that? I want I want to help people in terms of personal development and developing their own DIY do it yourself smart home. Okay. Do you know how to do, teach other people to do that? Yes. Are you doing that yourself with the, outside of your company that you work for? I don't have a great offering. I have some. So then how are you going to teach other people to do it? I make some free content on YouTube, but I don't have a product. Is, is, that, is that the key? You can't teach people to do something that you're not doing yourself personally yet. And the other question is, if you, you said you're working 7 to 4, so what do you do from 4 to 10 p.m.? Exactly. And that's probably the answer right there that I needed. I'm not working on it at that time. Yeah. And I should be. No compromises. Like, if your life's not where you want it to be, then 24 hours a day around the clock when you're awake outside of your, your, your workout time and maybe a little bit of family time, every second of free time goes to the business you're trying to build to get you away from the job that you have, even if that means less time with your spouse. I don't care what anybody tells you. Because anyone that's had any great level of success that's even beyond me has had astronomical amount of time away from their partners. Unless their partner's in business with them. That's yeah. different. Outside of that, sorry, babe. I got, I got shit to do. I got to get us places. So can I narrow it down? I, I think I'll just kind of mirror what you're saying. You, you're saying that I lack focus and that I should focus more and dedicate every single ounce. I'd say the discipline part first and okay. then focus. Because focus, you know how many people are lazy and ambitious and lazy and focused at the same time? Lazy and ambitious. Like, fuck, man. Like, yeah. like one of my... One of my guys in Australia, I fucking call him out all the time. I love him to death. He's very coachable. But, you know, I, if, it, even still to this day, I will fucking lose sleep to make sure the shit that I got to get done for a brighter future yeah. gets done. Like, I'm not fucking missing. And if something misses because, like, something literally stopped me from doing yeah. it. I'll make it up the very next day. If that means I'm running 20 hours a day and sleeping only four hours, don't listen to these fucking idiots that tell you, oh, you got to fuck you. You aren't where I want to be. Right. Shut up. I don't want to talk to the you. The fat doctor. Yeah. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. If you got to run 20 hours a day, if you got to run 32 hours before you get some sleep, that's what you fucking do. That's what I did. That's what anyone that we know did. That's what your last coach who I know, he fucking did this. We will fucking lose sleep. 
I will sacrifice sleep at any fucking cost if it's for a better future because I will buy back that time down the road. Gotcha. So you you take no for an answer. You will make sure that the work gets done no matter you what You have to, man. Some, look, look, man, even Hormozy fucking talks. This dude has gone to bed at 12 o'clock, wakes up at 1.30 in the morning, and he'll fucking post, couldn't sleep. I got to write in my book. Yeah. And he goes into his fucking cave, and he'll fucking read. He literally slept for one hour, and he's like, can't sleep. I got to work on this book. Hermosi's doing it at such a high level. I mean, there's so many great examples online, and I think that's the great power of social media is that we can be exposed to people who are doing it at a high level and then say, hey, like, I want to surround myself with people like that. Yeah, and you can have an indirect connection because if you're, if you're just absorbing the right shit that serves you and you don't follow any of the fucking nonsense, maybe some entertainment for laughs yeah. here and there, then you'll be okay. Because you're not going to, your mind, what your mind consumes is what it becomes, even if it's indirect and even if it's subconsciously. So if you're watching shit, if you're looking at fucking memes that empower your fucking dog shit, like, I mean, I'm, and I'm getting hostile because this subject gets me fucking heated, man. Yeah. Because, like, people will look for things on social media that validates and enables the bullshit that they're in so that they feel like it's okay. Right. Can you give an example like, of that? No, because it calls too many people out. All right. I mean, and I'm a, but people I personally know. But like even like memes or certain things that talk about like it's okay to be in your feelings and all that shit. No, dude, it's not because if those feelings do not have a direct connection with the thing that's actually taking place right now and you're just feeling because you're in your feelings, but there's nothing tangible, well, there's no relevancy to the fact. But this meme is saying that it's okay. And then you're going to go repost it, and then you're going to yeah. fucking talk about it, and then you're going to say, friends like... friends that are losers. Yeah, like, no, man. I want to talk to you about elevating. So do you encourage people to set goals? Yeah, you have to. How many and goals dreams. should set it at one time? Whatever. What should be the time frame that I'm setting a goal? There should be three-month goals, six-month goals, 12-month goals. So a three-month, a six-month, a 12-month, 24, 36, and then 60. Five years. Yeah. Okay. And then. And if you're really at a high level, like Hormozy, Bet Davids, and all that stuff, these guys are already thinking 10 years ahead. Yeah. Because their life is at that point where the next five years doesn't change their, their world. Yeah. 10 years from now will change their world. Yeah. So, Patrick Bet David, I recently read his book this year, The Your Next Five Strategic Moves. That's the older book. Yeah. And it was a banger. Yeah. Like, dude. I was so impressed with Patrick Bet David that I was like, this guy knows what he's fucking yeah. talking about. So he's a clear set. I mean, who else besides, you know, Hormozy, Patrick Bet David, who do you look to? Those two, that's it. Really? And, and Frisella, that's it. No uh, one else fucking matters. I mean, I follow some of the other guys yeah. too. They, you know, they give out some decent shit. They're like, okay, I can kind of take a little piece of this yeah. and that. But the rest of them are fucking retarded. I don't care about those guys. Like the only like these these three guys are fucking moving planets. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, naturally some of us follow Musk and Bezos just yeah. because. But when it comes to like true leadership, I only give a shit about Bet David, the Hormozis, and uh, Frisella. That's it. Yeah. The rest, they're peanuts. I mean, I'm a peanut to some of these other guys too, but compared to those three and i don't mean peanut be from like financial success even though those guys are killing it but from a level of leadership and the value and knowledge and wisdom these guys pass down to people and that these guys can lead armies that's why i follow those guys like those are the people that i really like anything that comes out of their mouth like all right i'm paying very close attention all right so i see patrick bet david advertising to me on instagram for the vault the vault are you going to the vault? Nope. Why not? So for me, for where I'm at, I don't need to take time away from my business. Okay. I have I have direct I have my own personal mentor that's, you know, guys worth you know, a good 10 figures and I have direct access from from a coach and mentor and like anytime like I need certain pieces of advice about certain things with whether it's my money or like how I conduct myself in certain th areas of business, um, you know, I just go to him. Um, and a lot of things that 
Patrick talks about, I mean, a lot of it's obviously new, but like Patrick and I were in the same company once upon a time. So I've had direct mentorship from Patrick yeah. before people knew who Patrick but David was. Right. Um, I still have his phone number. Nice. And, um, but you know, uh, I don't think for where I'm at, it would serve me yet. Gotcha. Because the vault is too open to everybody. Yeah. The next thing would be like I'd probably go to something where he, it's more exclusive A to like executive of, level. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're inspired by Patrick Bet David, Alex Hermosi, Andy Frisella. How let's say that they have differing opinions on a few different topics. Are you finding the one that most fits towards you and applying that to your life? No, I'm looking for the one that challenges me. I don't need the one that 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 confirms your belief. Com- yeah, because it's irrelevant. I'm not I don't need to I'm not again, I'm not looking to be validated. Yeah. I'm looking for the challenge that's like, okay, I gotta rethink my approach on this. Okay. So they- again, you I look for discomfort. Yeah. I'm not looking to be like, oh see? He said this too, so I'm doing it right. Like I'm not looking yeah. for that shit. That's silly. That's nonsense. So these are business influencers and you're an entrepreneur yourself. You run a coaching business. What is it like running a coaching business? Can you give me some details of what it's like? I mean, I know there's client communications, there's setting up training programs, there's, you know, setting goals and things like that. Like, what does your day to day as a coach look like? I mean, wake up, I get up at, <laughs> I get up at two o'clock in the morning. Um, so the morning just starts off with my own personal shit, not routines. Yeah. Like, I get up. Drink water, cup of coffee, take care of the, let the dogs out. Uh, I go for cardio at four o'clock in the morning, maybe four thirty. I go out for a one hour run, um, come back, eat, shower, handle some emails. Then I'll go meet with a client um, for for meeting, and then come back, get on a call, uh, call my girl around seven a.m. right out the gate, uh, just to let her know how it went. Did it's you, just simple communication. Do you guys live together? No. Is um, that strategic? Yes. Yes, no distractions. Um, I know people go, oh, what the fuck? Like, no. No. Um, I love that. Just by the way, like, that's that's a, a hot thing. It's take. interesting because, like, you know, we've been together for a few years, and people be like, oh, well, why would I listen to this guy? It's like, listen, your life fucking sucks. Just take a small piece of a fucking peanut that I just said. Yeah. Not because I think I know everything. I don't think I know jack shit. But, like, there are certain things. Like, I think... What life was 50 years ago, when you meet a girl, you fall in love, they fall in love with each other, and they're like moving in in six months, they're getting married in a year, that that time doesn't exist anymore. People of that caliber don't exist anymore. Relationships of that caliber don't exist anymore. It's very, like one out of like 10 million that exists, like to that level where it's like meet, move, marriage, all in a year. When I hear people do that early on now, I'm like, oh man, like do they actually have their shit straight? Or is it because, like, it's all superficial and lust because it's in a honeymoon phase that's lasting a little bit longer than usual? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and then blasting calls the first, like, from there, it's all my outreach between, like, current clients and new prospective clients, phone calls. What's your outreach like? So I want to dive into that further. Like, Follow-up from former prospects. Texting, DMing new prospects, and what, uh, what are calling you saying? My ref- calling my references and my referrals. What are you saying to new prospects? Like, hey, I can help you out. Like, literally, can, no, I can just you walk ask, me through. I something? just, I'll literally just ask, like, hey, how's? It depends. Like, so, like, I'll kind of take a peek at what their social media looks like if I'm doing it through Instagram. Yeah, and I'll be like, hey, how's your health and fitness coming along? Just that simple. Yeah. I think people like overcomplicate looking for a fucking they magic do. thing. They do. Or they just don't want to do it. They're like, yeah. oh, I don't want to something like, dude, no, you have to. Like that's part of the game. Like you're not in a position where you have infinite referrals coming in. Yeah. You have to. And even people that are doing like not just me, but most people that are between that sixty to a hundred thousand dollar monthly range, like the outreach is still crazy. Like now you can hire people to do it for you, but I I I'm a control freak, so I kinda like doing it myself. Yeah. Um, and it's part of that like addicted beha- addicted behavior, you know. And, and then it could be about their business. I'm like, hey, notice you're running a fucking coaching business. Like, yeah. how's that going? Or I notice you're a personal trainer in person. How's that going? You making good money? Do you feel financially stable? 
you know, and then I'll kind of tell them about my personal success when I was in-person training. They don't believe it. Yeah. Um, you know, because like in-person training, I, I got to about 50 grand a month and then I was like tapped out. I couldn't, I couldn't grow past that. And that's why I made the transition to online because I wanted to do more. Um, and they're like, no way. I was like, dude, I'm like, you're just not doing it right. Yeah. And you're still just, you're, 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 you're fishing in a pond with a bunch of fucking tilapias. There's a phrase I love, Bedros Koulian. He uses the phrase time collapse. Yeah. When you hire a coach, you're essentially time collapsing. You're you're stopping spinning your own wheels, wasting yeah. your own time, and you're getting around people that have done what you want to do. Yeah, one of my clients, she's been with me for like, uh, she's been with me for just under a year, and she just does an in-person training business with a little bit of online because yeah. she's not ready to go fully online. And she really does enjoy the in-person part, but... Man, she went from making like two and a half. This is just this last year. She went from making like two and a half G's a month and now makes 15 grand a month, you know? And she's just moved in her own place. Before, once upon a time, was like thought she had to have roommates. Yeah. She's now looking at getting a new M2. Like her life is fucking banging and she's in full control. Yeah. You know, and she's still sticking with it and still like keeping me on. She's like, man, I'm, she said herself, like, I'm running with this dude till the wheels fall off because every single month he helps me create a new fucking deal. You know, she just closed two deals last month, made her 10 G's. Yeah. Um, I was like, man, like your fucking life is so different yeah. than it was 10 months ago. And it's crazy when you just put in that commitment and dedication, like, oh, how, mind how you, mind you, she didn't have the money to invest in me when she started. She and was scared to the fucking bone. She got a loan to do it. And guess what? First month out the gate, fucking 10 G's. She was scared. Fucking that put a fucking hole in her bank, like made her negative. No, literally, man. And sometimes when I've invested in the past, I'm shaking. I am physically not okay. Yeah. I'm having like, I I guess there there's second thoughts, doubts at that night. Like, oh god, did I make a big mistake? But it's all it's always the following through with what you committed to, what you're paying for, doing the work. And on the other side of that, you come out on top. Like you can see the success. Yeah. You can see where you were 90 days ago, a couple of years ago, and you can see the amount of growth. Yeah. I think we need to, this is super important actually. I think we need to get away from this phrase of being around like-minded individuals. I fucking, I genuinely with passion in my heart yeah. despise that phrase now. Because most people, again, just like how they talk about personal development and all this shit, like, they don't know what that means. Yeah. Like, hanging around with like-minded individuals that are doing literally the same shit you're doing because you guys are congruent with what you're doing ain't getting you anywhere. You're fucking losing just like they are. And you're considering it hanging out with like-minded Maybe because you guys all go to the same gym. Maybe because yeah. you guys work out so it became gym buddies or whatever the fuck that's not hey that is not what like-minded individuals actually means hanging out with like-minded individuals means i'm rolling with people that are 10 to 100 levels beyond me yeah i have some level of significant value that i can give to them where they will allow me to be around them yeah and because of that they will pour into me pull me up and there might be a couple people under me that want to level up at the same pace. And they're like, dude, tell me fucking how high to jump. And I'll pull those people with me. And it's a fucking ladder to the top. It's not hanging around people that are all at the same fucking level as you. That's f fuck. Like-minded individuals phrase is just bullshit phrase now. Because it's so fucking, it's just a misconception of reality. And it's like, oh, we're at the same level. He's at the same level. So we're got, what, we got... Five dudes in here. Oh, yeah, I'm just hanging around with like-minded individuals. Bro, yeah. we're all fucking losers. Oh, we're all at the same level. We're all making the same money. Why would I want to hang around with people that are doing the exact same money that I am, the same shit that I'm doing, that are not at levels beyond me where they can give me a significant amount of value that will change my life in the next three to six months? That's me wanting to be a loser because, hey, we're all at the same level. Yeah. That validates my shit, my shortcomings. So let's say someone wants to get around these higher level individuals and they, you, re, you, you said it best, they need to provide some sort of value because there's nothing worse than someone that appears as a taker, taker, taker. How do you, you know, 
how do you craft your value to the world? Like, how do you show up with value to give people? Like, is it is it really finding a area of expertise and being able to offer that yeah. and an exchange of value? Yes. Like my mentor. Again, he's my mentor. He's my best friend. He's my business advisor. He's my financial. Ad- oh, he's not my financial advisor, but I look to him for financial literacy. Gotcha. Um, you know, I'm around this dude. Him and I just went to Monaco. Cost us a fucking fortune for seven days. Yeah. Um, but my revenue and my financial literacy and my financial habits of how I invest is growing being around him. Mm-hmm. What I bring to the table for him is, again, obviously what I, what I specialize in when it comes to health and wellness, but also with discipline, with certain types of principles and values that I expect from people because it's something that he looks to because I have a different standard than he does. And he's like, and because it's, but mine is because of the past that I come from. So now I just, when I, if I have, if for two minutes, I'm like, I'm not down with this dude's energy. Nope. I ain't even going to fuck with it. You know, and he's usually like, for him, he has a hard time reading that. But again, just the discipline, the health, the wellness, the, the, his thought process with, with how he moves forward in life. Cause he can just retire right now if he wants to. Um, but like the shit that I bring to the table just kind of gives him more life, but also the standard that he holds other people at has been raising because listen, he's never met a guy like me. He's never had someone in his circle that comes from a life that I come from that actually views and sees people differently than the average person does. I see and hear shit that no one else sees and hears. I feel shit that no one else feels. Again, because of the past that I come from. Mm -hmm. That's a significant amount of value for people to like, man. I mean, look, even one of my other clients who were very good friends, he told me, he's like, man, he's like, bro, I was telling my wife last night, like, you're, he's like, you're a stubborn motherfucker, but like, you got your shit on lock. Yeah. Like, no one can fuck with you. He's like, and I admire that because I got fucked with a lot this last and He's fucking very, very successful eight-figure dude. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, like, listen to me a little bit here and there and you'll never get fucked over again. I mean, you're going to have one in between here and there, but yeah. never again. Nice. So, I mean, I think it's super crucial to really highlight one of the key converse, key points of our conversation today. And that's like who you surround yourself with and having a great inner circle around you and striving to be more hanging out, you know, not always not being the smartest person in the room. You want to hang out with people who are steps and leaps and bounds ahead of you. If you want to become yeah, more beyond, like you don't want to be in a room where everyone's doing the same thing. Even if, listen, even if you are winning, even if you are at like, Hey, let's say a hundred thousand a month, for example, yeah. even if you're at that level, if that's, if you're done there, okay, cool. Different story. This conversation isn't for you, but if you're not done there, your other four friends cannot be other hundred thousand dollar month earners. Maybe one. Yeah. Because only one other person might be thriving for something to the, get to seven figures a month. The other three, man, these guys better be like fucking notches above you where you can't even comprehend half the shit they do yet. And I think, really, I'm grateful to have met you. Uh, Travis, the owner of Sticky Paw Studios, has introduced us. And I think podcasting, especially at Sticky Paw Studios, you're allowed to surround yourself with people who are killing it in life, you know, and we're sharing what we've learned. We're sharing our journey. We're having conversations and we're posting it to the world. And I think that that's the power of social media yeah. and, you know, really your inner circle, who you're surrounding yourself with. Like I've gotten a ton of value from this one hour conversation. And not only did I get value from it, the audience will get value from it too. Yeah. So I think it's, it's incredible. And I think Really, just to sum it up, if you're not making content on the internet, you're being selfish. You know, you're keeping all that shit to yourself, and you have so much value to provide. And I think people sell themselves yeah, short. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, listen, if you're not on social media for just the pure intention of receiving and giving education, you got no business being on social media. Like, you can't be on social media for a whole bunch of other reasons. Also, the only purpose behind it is giving and receiving education and business. That's it. What about the big booty Instagram models? Whatever. Okay. You want you want to look at fucking chicks that are soliciting themselves to 10 million other men? I mean, could care less. I just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it really just comes down to that. Is 
You should only be following things. And again, education, things that challenge you, that force you to have to like look at things differently, not not looking at things that confirm and validate what you feel or what you think or what you're doing. It's like you have to be challenged. Like it's got to kind of mind fuck you like, what the fuck? That's how it's supposed to be. You know, if, if, if you're reading things and you're hanging out with people that just, again, basically make you feel like you're good enough. Or you know what? Let's even take it to the next level before we wrap it up. People that How do I word this? That accept you for who you are. That's some loser shit, man. That's that's more loser shit than looking to be validated. Yeah. Let me tell you. Because if if my mentor accepted me for who I am, that means he plans for me to stay below him the whole fucking time. Right. I don't want to be accepted for who I am. My personality will stay the way it is. Yeah. But as far as like Everything else, it's not good enough. I might be doing good relative to the next person, but it's not good enough. And if we're constantly looking for people, because the, listen, the whole purpose of any kind of relationship and friendship is that we're gonna hang. If we're gonna hang out, we're gonna hang out because I'm gonna hold you accountable, and because I see that next version of you, and I expect you to do whatever it takes to get to that next level that you're supposed to get to. Yeah. I don't care about this version of you because to me, if I know enough about you, you're lowballing yourself. Why are you not doing what's gonna get you to that next version? Right. And if you don't like me for that, then cool, we can't be friends either. It's you can be a nice guy, yeah. I can be a nice guy too, yeah. but you know what, I'm gonna be in the asshole in the situation be like, no, we can't hang. You don't, you don't desire that change and that growth. You want me to just accept who you are and no. I want you to be better. I want you to do better. I want to see you becoming more and doing more. And if I think your thought process or if I think the people you hang out with is fucking incorrect and wrong, I'm going to fucking tell you. And if you don't like it and you say like, well, who the fuck do you think you are? Well, let's look at this person. Let's look at this person you roll with. Do, does their shit actually coincide with where you want to go? Are they... Are they anywhere remotely close to where you want to go or are they just where they are like maybe two levels above you time change i love it so i want to end on one final topic so tim grover michael jordan kobe bryant Dwayne wade's you know mindset coach essentially he has a and the trainer yes and the trainer can't can't forget that you know he kind of popularized weight training in the nba yeah so he has an eight minute speech and I want to highlight one line of it, and I think you're aligned with it. And it's a story, and it's a controversial story, and you know Tim gets emotional every time he tells the story. But he's, about his daughter, about his daughter. Tell it, tell <laughs> it, bro. I want to hear it. I love it. I mean, look, there was a time where his daughter was basically I don't remember verbatim. I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher it. But to paraphrase, there was a time where his daughter asked him like, "When am I gonna see you, yeah. Dad?" And he basically said, like, dad's got to work. Yeah. And, you know, the reason why I can take care of you, the reason why mom gets to be there for you and do with that is because I have, I go out and I help out these athletes and I take care of them and I, and I work. And because of that, I'm able to provide for you to have the life that you have and mom gets to raise you. And, Savage, bro. And, but, and guess what? Now he gets to buy back all that time. Yeah. And I just love the way he says it. He's like, yeah, you know, my daughter, my, it. my daughter came to me. She's like, Daddy, you know, why, why are you going to do this? He's packing his suitcase. He said, you know, I got to keep food on the table for you and mom. He goes to the daughter says, you know, Daddy, what if I ate less? And Tim Grover pauses and he kind of turns aside and he said, you know, the Disney tale, the Disney fairy tale is I stopped packing. We went and got ice cream and everything was okay. And he says three words, and it's just super pow powerful. He says, I kept packing. Yeah, no compromises. You can't. Like, most people in the average are do not and will not and will consciously choose to not understand that your purpose can have zero compromises. It doesn't fucking matter how much time it takes away from the people you love. And, you know, 
it's funny because the people that are going to judge that and that are going to like completely disagree and say fuck that are the very people that you would never trade places with in life whether it's their physical health whether it's their financial health whether it's their relationship health like bro like i would never trade places with you. like your opinion means nothing it's invalid because this guy because eventually you get to buy that time back and when you get to buy that time back it makes it a million times worth more for sure you know, like I, dude, I'll take like I will take no compromises to the fucking grave. That's just the way it is. That has to be your number one rule in life. Period. So Cause, true. Because guess what? No compromise applies to everything. No compromise to my faith, to my relationship with God. No compromises to how I conduct myself in my relationship, how I go about my business, how I carry myself, my expectations of myself. There's no compromise. I'm not meeting you in the middle. We're not going to come to an agreement. We're not going to meet. No. Yeah. And yeah, sounds shitty. My way or the highway. Don't fucking care. Perfect. Because the only people that can change that are people that are doing it bigger, better than I am that advise me on how to do it bigger and better. Yeah. That's it. All right. Well, I think that's a perfect <laughs> ending. Perfect note to end the show on. <laughs> but man, Sean, I had a great hour with you today. I think we had a lot of great learning lessons. I really appreciate you coming on today, sharing your story time. and all these great learning lessons. So, um, everyone, you can follow Sean Alexander on social media. Where can they find you? It's Sean underscore P underscore Alexander. All right, man. Well, you absolutely killed it. You're an absolute stud. I really appreciate you coming on today's show. This has been Elevation with Chris Orm, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll see you in the next one.